I'm Craig Goodfriend, industry manager at Facebook uh, on our entertainment vertical. Uh, I've, I oversee our branded content publishing partnerships for our global ad sales team. I'm um, also apparently the only person who likes Suddenly Susan. <laughs> huge, is what it huge is, fat. Brooke Shields, why not? Um, but it, it's my privilege today to be sitting up here with these three uh, amazing people. Um, and we're gonna be talking to you about Roll the Dice, which is a, a premium video partnership between MGM, Group9, and Facebook. So please say hi to uh, Lauren Frasca, creative strategist on our uh, creative shop team. Erica Kurtz, the director of social media strategy and social intelligence at MGM. And Adam Sch Schlachter, the cli chief client officer at Group 9, who also, if you look at his bio, does a great job of listening to feedback. Um, <laughs> so before we get into uh, the discussion about the program, we put together a, a video for you guys that really showcases the program, and we'll uh, watch that now. Already known for their world-class hospitality, MGM Resorts International was looking to establish itself as the world's leading entertainment company by creating content that feels as spontaneous and rewarding as a trip to Las Vegas itself. Working with leading lifestyle brand Thrillist, we developed Roll the Dice, a game show set on the strip that showcases all of the OMG that MGM has to offer. Unsuspecting Vegas visitors answered trivia for big prizes and a shot at rolling our dice for an only in Vegas, only at MGM experience. Las Vegas is the brightest place on earth when viewed from outer space. How many days of sunshine does Vegas average per year? What country is credited with inventing playing cards? Correct! <laughs> We played with a full deck, producing an ecosystem of media to engage the right user with the right content at the right time. The campaign reached 41 million people and generated 40 million video views, which resulted in an incremental 1.25 million people with intent to visit Vegas, a key brand metric that is historically hard to move given its already high baseline. We were on a roll and not going to walk away while the table was hot. So we innovated on the format. MGM became the first brand to leverage Facebook's live game show API by creating a surprise final episode that allowed all of America to roll the dice. Retargeting our audience drove 18,000 new fans of MGM, an engaged audience that stayed to watch even when they were out of the running, and an impressive 9.8% brand favorability lift. Jackpot. So, Erica, we'll start with you. Can you take us through MGM's thoughts on content, how it fits in your overall marketing strategy, as well as your objectives for the campaign? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I'm, I'm Erica. I oversee uh, social media at MGM Resorts. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with MGM Resorts. Most of you more than others, I'm sure. But uh, we're more than just a casino hotel brand. We actually did some soul searching here in the last couple of years, and we're like, why are people actually coming to Vegas? Like, what's their purpose? And we identified that people are coming to Las Vegas to be entertained. So we've repositioned uh, our brand and uh, to entertain you. So. We, we identified, okay, we know what we're selling is entertainment now, and we know that entertainment is going to take a ton of content, and so we really value content and content strategy. However, last summer, last summer excuse me, we realized um, my hometown, Vegas, it experienced a really soft booking period last summer and fall. And so um, we, we tasked our, our partners at Facebook to say, you know what, what is a really awesome, disruptive way, an innovative way that we can really drive intent around visitation of Las Vegas. MGM Resorts actually makes up over 70% of Las Vegas Boulevard. So we rise with the city and we fall with the city. So driving that is one of our key, our, our primary KPIs is really important. And, and Facebook and uh, Group 9 definitely delivered. Awesome. So Lauren, can you uh, talk to us about how the concept between Thrillist, MGM, and, and Facebook came to fruition? And how do you bring an activation like this to life on Facebook? Yeah. Um, so. I was here at this conference in the, over the summer, the Elevate conference, and there was a big debate in the room about um, you know, what you should bring into a room to pitch, um, whether it should be that one big idea that you really believe in, or if it should be multiple ideas so you can pull things out and you know, respond in real time. Um, my feeling is that you should go into a room with one thing only, and that is the willingness to throw away all of your hard work when your client responds to you <laughs> and gives you sort of another direction, which is exactly what we did. Um, we went in to pitch these folks a corporate social responsibility 
study idea. Uh, we know that that's near and dear to MGM's brand um, and hearts. Um, so we went in to do that. And we got the brief um, from Erica and her team that really what they needed to do was drive bookings now. That was the immediate business need. So we went back with Thrillist. Um, we sat together in a room and landed pretty quickly on the idea of a game show. We love the idea, like our North Star being to bring the excitement and risk and reward and really fun of Vegas to the, uh, the user at home. And we felt like a game show was sort of the best way to do that. Awesome. So, Adam, can you talk to us about the advantage of a publisher like Thrillist partnering with MGM to bring like some, some uh, program like this to life? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as a leader in the sort of food, drink, travel, entertainment space for about 11 years now, um, and the leading brand in covering that content on social, it, for us, it's all about highlighting the experiences that you want to go out and have and share and, and bring people to uh, and talk about because it puts you in the know and it sort of puts you at the center of what's happening culturally. Um, and for MGM to engage our audience, uh, to bring them those sort of nuggets and insights about like the things they might be missing out in Vegas is like really important for us to help feed our audience who's looking for that kind of information. They want to figure out how they can live their best life, how they can bring people along, how they can be seen as sort of someone who's in the know about it. Um, and that's something Thrillist brings to them every single day. As a uh, massive partner of Facebook's uh, and the creative shop and the anthology team, uh, it allows us to think about how we reimagine telling those stories beyond sort of written editorial and beyond sort of uh, you know, video reviews and coverage. So hosted programming uh, has been something that we've seen a growth in, uh, a rise in talk, a rise in uh, gamified uh, programming, if you will. And when we thought about uh, the business that MGM's in of entertaining people and how we're trying to inform them, bring those two things together in a new format that allows us to experiment, allows them to stay sort of ahead, um, but still maintain that, uh, that sort of entertainment ethos, uh, we thought would resonate really well with our audience. And lo and behold, it, it did. <laughs> Awesome. So um, one thing I want to talk about was flexibility. So Lauren, can you take us through um, why pivoting is critical to creating branded content? And can you talk about how the viewer feedback helped in influence the life finale? Yes. Um, so this execution was originally conceived as an eight episode sort of tape series. Um, and as with everything we do with Anthology, um, we were prepared to iterate as we kind of went on. So we knew we were gonna have feed assets, we knew we were gonna have stories assets, and we were gonna sort of use those um, and target the folks who were consuming the content based on what they wanted to watch when they wanted to watch it. But um, you know, while we were sort of monitoring this content rolling out, it was great to see that the sentiment, first of all, was really high. We were getting lots of really great comments, lots of likes, lots of hearts. Um, but what we thought was really interesting was that folks were saying, oh, this game looks like so much fun. I really wish that I could play it. Um, so, okay, I'm gonna do a shameless plug for the anthology program. Please do, please do. One of the great things of working with the anthology program is that you, we're, you know, obviously we're internal, we see the, our new products as they're evolving every day, um, you know, we get to sort of see it first, and concurrently with this, us noticing this viewer behavior, um, we were starting to see a lot of internal discussion about Facebook's uh, live game show API. So that we sort of married those two things together, the light bulbs went off, and we said, oh, it would be really great if we could actually give the people what they want and do a live version of this game show allowing folks to play at home. So Erica, can you add to that just about what made the live so special for MGM? Yeah, absolutely. So with MGM, you know, what we sell is holy shit experiences, you know? <laughs> That's what you're coming to Vegas for. Um, and so we do that, we like to do that through like surprise and delight, very common term in content where we, we, can give, we can give epic experiences. So when we were filming the eight episodes, it was actually a lot of fun because who you are seeing, those are live guests. Those are people that Lauren and team were able to pull in and experience. And when we saw the sentiment, like, oh my gosh, I wish I could be a part of that. Um, being able to do that live and to give our viewers at home an opportunity to win one of those like holy shit epic experiences was awesome. So it, it worked out really well and it was extremely positive and, and, and we loved everything about it. So Adam, talk to us about the production process. It was totally smooth, right? Or were there any bumps in the road? No, I mean, you know, we did this in our sleep. <laughs> uh, actually, we, we, we did this sleeplessly, but what? what <laughs> but we have an amazing team who functions uh, you know, really highly uh, and are insomniacs. One of the things that I think uh, allowed us to, to continue to move fast was uh, a partner who was willing to make 
um, really hard decisions, but, but move quickly with us and give us real clear feedback and direction on the brief. Uh, and a partner uh, from a distribution standpoint that was willing to work with us on figuring out new technology where there was maybe not a standard um, and willing to allow us to bring in some of our uh, editorial expertise because uh, most of our, our brand shop team, which is our in-house uh, content studio that I lead, uh, most of those guys come out of editorial. So they understand the audience, they understand the tone of voice, they know how to make that connection, um, but they really want to experiment in new forms and new formats so we can go first. It's, it's a core value of, of the groups. Um, so being able to uh, have the trust uh, and the partnership uh, amongst all of us, we were able to go really, uh, really hard and really, really quick. We also have uh, a tremendous asset in our production team in that they have great local contacts. So we've got a team on the ground uh, in the West Coast who has local connects in Vegas where we could augment um, some production resources. So when we had to go produce live, it was within you know, 48 hours, maybe 24, um, but as if we had all the time in the world to get it done. And it, it was really as smooth as could be. So Eric, I imagine you know, live comes with many risks for a brand. Can you talk to us about the risks involved and how you guys overcame yeah. them? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm actually, uh, I, I would easily say that MGM has uh, took risks that most brands don't have to worry about. So MGM has this little thing called a gaming license. And um, working with, we really wanted to be innovative. So working with the tool, you know, MGM is actually the first brand globally to leverage that game show API. So my legal counsel was feeling some sort of way about that, especially since we were talking with audiences and offering um, experiences in real time. So um, down to the final hour, we were teasing it, we had a primed audience, but down to the final hour before the live episode debuted, we were at risk at, at losing our gaming license. So I'm sure your experience in Vegas would not have been the most fun next time around if these three people sitting up here yeah. ruined that for you. Um, that, that was... <laughs> We, not the goal. Uh, yeah, not the, goal. The, the goal was don't bankrupt <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, No, So we were able to uh, overcome that across three different legal teams um, and, and really push out something that was successful. So I think the takeaway there is, is definitely take risks. Don't let that inhibit you from innovating, but definitely ensure that you're partnering with the appropriate contacts to, to do it the right way. Awesome. So to follow up on that, I mean, look, it's a great partnership and everyone loved working together and the output was amazing, but as a marketer, you have goals to hit. Did the program work for you and was branded content able to deliver? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we were so thrilled with the content. As you can see with the results, um, we saw um, a quantitative return in uh, intent for visitation, which was the brief. That was our true north. And, and being able to see that with this mid-funnel type programming was amazing. Additionally, the sentiment was just was incredible. I think it is... Uh, a brand's goal or, you know, it, it's definitely a win. When we were able to see those comments coming in through the, uh, the staged episode saying like, oh my God, I want to be a part of that, to the point where when we, when we actually aired the, the live episode, people are, 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 are commenting, when's the next one? And I can't wait to go and I love Vegas. So intent and, and brand favorability, we definitely saw an increase. And I think to add to that is um, as marketers, we all know the value in finding partners that align with your brand. Thrillist provides fun. They're, they provide fun uh, as a publisher to, to people who want enter, entertainment, vacation, foodies, etc. So being able to work with somebody who wants to show fun and I'm able to provide fun was an awesome partnership. It was a sure bet. <laughs> nice. Come on. Good pun, good pun. We had it was so a, many. It was, the right, it, was a, it was the right gamble. We calculated the risk. We had to roll the dice. We had so, so many bad gambling. Roll we have time. Going. So we have time for one more question. Uh, we've heard a lot over the past couple of days about how advertising is really driven by what consumers want. So with that said, what's next for roll the dice? dice? What's next for the partnership? Yeah, um, I can take that from a creative standpoint for sure. Um, so one of the cool things that we saw with the live episode was, I don't know if you guys play HQ, the folks out here play HQ, you know how like you start out and there's tons of people that are in there and then as people get the questions wrong, they just drop out and the audience goes to nothing, right? Because it's not that interesting if you're not engaged. Um, what we saw with this live episode was that people actually did stay to watch even when they had lost. So it meant that they were really, really engaged in the in the content. In addition, the comments that we saw, to Erica's point, people were like, hey, we want to see the next one. When's the next one? We got 18,000 likes on the page with one episode the week between Christmas and New Year's. It was like <laughs> amazing. So um, definitely like thinking about how we can take Roll the Dice to a place where we are largely live. 
um, creatively, um, one of the, the best practices that we have when we do lives is thinking about the waiting room period, that sort of like five to 10 minute period, time period where we start um, the, the, the broadcast and we use the waiting room to sort of fill up, right? To have people, an audience come waiting for the content to start. It's really kind of a crucial, anticipating the game or whatever the content is. It's a crucial part of the success of a program. Um, so we haven't seen a ton of innovation there and we think that there probably is a really cool opportunity to use for lists brand voice and this idea about like having Vegas be the hero to um, do something in that waiting room area. Yeah. And if you, you know, everyone hates waiting, right? You hate waiting online, you hate waiting for the skip ad button to pop up. Um, but what if we can entertain you and educate you and inspire you throughout? There's just, there's so much amazing content and so much, so many amazing stories and personalities that MGM represents. If we could bring that to people while they're sort of queuing up for the game, it gets them in the mood, it gets them excited, maybe there's some clues that we can provide, but it sort of keeps uh, the experience uh, alive uh, you know, throughout sort of all as uh, aspects of it. Exactly, you asked about risk earlier and Adam and I were chatting about this. It's actually a, a bigger risk for us right now if we don't take advantage of this audience that wants to see more of this live uh, content and opportunities to win epic Vegas experiences. So that's definitely something that's on the roadmap that we're gonna continue to do is figure out how to make this. We, we, we figured it out, we're working, we figured out how to make it scalable in partnership with Group 9, so continuing to do that. And then also leveraging other parts of our business. As Lauren said, um, MGM Resorts has a huge corporate uh, social responsibility effort, especially in the city of Las Vegas, um, in, in our community. So next, looking at uh, other innovative ways to lean into our other brand pillars with this team. Awesome, so that's our time, but before we wrap, we just want to quickly acknowledge um, our two awesome client partners, Matt Ryder and Catherine Zelensky. They were the Facebook's heart and soul of the program. Um, so thanks to them, and thanks to you guys for listening. Thank you guys. Thank you.